Blog Talk Radio. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Define You Radio classes in session. With the uh, we're in session tonight with the continuation of the series Leave It Behind in 2018. We actually probably should have did the series in a way that it kind of rhymes. I'm just saying, it's just a thought. So tonight we are tackling money. No, we don't want you to leave money behind. That would be absolutely ridiculous. But we want you to leave the bad spending habits, bad saving habits, and bad debt habits behind. And, yes, the B is silent because if I hear somebody else say debt or debit, Houston's going to have problems, okay? Uh, In case you hadn't figured out, it's another Hot Seat Tuesday. Uh, Definitely get your pens and papers ready if y'all don't know what what kind of show is going to be. I'm your host, Valencia Griffin-Wallace, and, of course, the beautiful queens are on the line to be um, their usual queen-like self. Queen Shannon and Queen LaVon, if y'all would like to say hey, ladies. Hey, good Hello, evening, everyone. everybody. <laughs> I can't be the only person that have heard people say debt. No, you're or not. Or debit. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just me. Mind no, you, that, that's I don't talk so to funny. those kind of people. <laughs> you, the truth is the light, Jesus. So, um... <laughs> I'm excited and um, to announce we're on Instagram. Yay. Yay. So you got, yes. So y'all have two places to connect with us. Well, many places to connect, but go ahead and go over to our IG page. It's at Define You Radio. Um, it has links. We'll have, you know, y'all can see the new fire logo and everything else we have going on. So we'll definitely keep that up today and we you know got some new graphics out there of course that's gonna change and things as um you know as we go into 2019 but yeah the graphics not the logo just let that be known so besides not pronouncing the word debit or debt we're going to talk about some money stuff y'all ready (laughs) ready ready (laughs) Uh, okay, I, I'm truly scared because, y'all, we have a little private inbox, okay? And I know on the show, y'all heard me talk about wigs. If you follow uh, me on face on social media at all, you see my hair is always changing. And I always talk about my duffel bag of wigs. And so today in our inbox, when we decided we are going to talk about debt and money, um, I went ahead and showed the queens exactly what I'm talking about with my wigs. And how, I don't know how many I have, okay? It's a lot. So I'm going to just kick it off like that because first thing we're going to talk about is definitely some spending habits. So what were your thoughts, Queen Shannon, when you saw my closet and duffel bag of wigs? Um, That's crazy. Those were the first two things I, I thought. Um, it was it was it was so. <laughs> first of all, I was I was blown away by the fact that it's a whole closet dedicated to it. Let me just say that it looked like it should be a linen closet with somebody towels and, and sheets and washcloths, but it was wig. <laughs> so the only thing I can say was, "Wow, that's crazy." That, that's it. That's all I got. It's um it's interesting and maybe this weekend I will actually sit count and let you guys know the exact number of wigs I have in there. I may post a picture on um IG and Facebook, but it's really a lot of wigs and it's ridiculous. And when I do the math, you know, because if we average about fifty dollars a week, let's say some a little more, some a little less, but let's say we average it out. And I don't know, what's your guesstimate with how many wigs you think I have in there? Mm. 
Mm. Um, minimum I'm 30. Go, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to just take a stab in the dark. I'll say 65 is in there. Okay. We're going to see who's who's right. That may be a good thing to post on um, a good thing to post and say, guess how many wigs this is. Is who's right, Queen Shannon or Queen LaVon? And I want to give a quick shout out to young King Cameron, my my offspring, who told me he's listening in. So, son, I hope you and your friends at University of Louisiana at Lafayette are taking notes so y'all could get y'all money right. Get your money right. Get your money right. (laughs) So, um, that's that's my habit. I think that that's one of the things that has been a consistent factor in in my life for I don't know, probably like 8 years, right? But I really didn't get to buying them like that except probably the last 3 years. And it's mm-hmm. I don't even want to bust out my calculator and do the math on that. So, that's one of my bad spending habits. So, Queen Shannon, what would you admit that if we saw a picture of or knew that you spent money on, what would we be like, oh, my gosh? Like, what's your, your bad spending habit? Um, health care, health products. So, whether it's natural stuff, um, natural products of skin care, um, I have a strong addiction to herbal teas. Um, and not just I, I don't want I don't want the bag I don't want the bags you dip I I need the actual leaves that I can put in my tea bonnet cup with my my little filter and and brew them from the leaves themselves um, so yeah I have a serious addiction to to health products. See I don't know if that's like well when you use no, the a, word addiction that that makes addiction. it bad but it's like health stuff. Because it, no. it's it's anywhere from because it's anywhere from like shea butters to black seed oil to sea moss to bladder wax to black cohosh tea and sarsaparilla and and it, honestly sometimes I look at I'm like I don't really need to buy any more of this but then I find a reason like I bought some cell food why do I need this I don't need extra oxygen like you know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Really the spending have habits of a of a health conscious person. I was about to ask you, you made some of those words up because a lot of that ninety nine point nine percent of what you just said, I don't even know what it is. I swear to you, I didn't make it up. Then I'm buying books, herbal books for natural remedies to heal. Which I mean, they're not bad things, but it's like you know, Shannon. Pretty much, they all saying the same thing. Why did you get somebody you after? You know. It, it, and then I make the excuse, well, I got this at the bookstore where I had credit, so I only paid $2 for it. So it's not that. It's, it's bad. Just continue yeah. to keep me in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. So that's what, that's like a great uh, topic, how your health can cost you. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a great topic. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, it's, yes. it's cheaper to get a burger. It's cheaper to buy, <laughs> get some Vaseline than uh, shea butter. Wait, hold Wait. on. Hold on. <laughs> Don't start, because I already had like a whole lecture on on <laughs> on using Vaseline or petroleum, and it, it, it was until 2018, like literally a couple of months ago, that I put together like petroleum. And my friend was like, well, don't you read the label? No, it's Vaseline. It's been in existence since before I was alive. So, huh. look, that, that's when we do a health show because I was shocked, yes. but I hadn't stopped using Vaseline. I still use my huh. shea butter. Thank you. For the good part. But Thank I still, you. I hadn't stopped using uh, Vaseline. I'm sorry. Working on that. Queen <laughs> LaVon. Yes. What is your um 
you know, what's your addiction, so to speak, that's costing you? What's your what's your habit? Chai, you know what shoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think um, Queen Shannon would be just about right. Um, I would say accessories, shoes, purses, jewelry, and to me, I figured hair is an accessory, but after seeing Valencia's um, wig closet, I think my hair um, addiction is very, I don't think I'm even addicted. I'm just a hair, you know, fan compared to her, but prop shoes, I know, yeah. Then y'all sound so sad But <laughs> Like at the end y'all sound so sad Like saying it out loud I think yeah. is part of the problem Like uh, yeah. I don't want to just say women But in general Especially in, in the black culture I'll say that Because that's the culture I'm in So that's the only cultural culture I can't talk tonight That I can speak about but we don't have those money discussions. You know, mm-hmm. we don't, we don't ha- have, I wasn't raised, uh, you know, that's not your business, you know. So we yeah. don't have those money discussions. So, of course, when you get into adulthood and credit cards are thrown at you and, you know, you finally get that first job or whatever, it's kind of learning on the job. It you is. know, it's learning on the job. So I made a, a conscious effort to talk to my son about money and and credit. And, you know, as I learn more, I make him, you know, I teach him whether he want to listen or not, what he going to do. So I want to, the first thing I wanted to discuss besides that, so listeners, we definitely think about what are you spending money on? What's that one thing you're addicted to? Is it frappes, which almost became an addiction until I started doing the math on how much it cost me to get a frappe that I get brain freeze from mm. anyway. And McDonald's is not see. around the corner. You know? Ooh. So how much oh. is that Starbucks habit costing you? How much is that mm. gym membership you're not using, don't plan on using, don't even know where the card is at to let you in the gym. How much oh, is wow. that costing you? So the first thing I, I had to I actually to discuss, go back. <laughs> and, that and, hurt because I had to go back and ask them, could they give me another card because I couldn't find it when I finally oh, decided to go. <laughs> oh, my God. That's sad. But it's, oh. it's, it's the truth. It's, it's the truth. It we is. don't look at, look at that. And I made a post right before we came on saying all I need is three coffees and $6 billion. I love <laughs> coffee, you know, and I I buy it, you know, at Walmart, put in my little curry, and I, but I'll drink, you know, two cups a day. or some, And that adds up. That means I'm going through this one box that I'm looking at. Okay, well, it cost me about $5, but I'm going through it twice as fast as if I just have uh-huh. one cup of coffee or stop drinking coffee all together, which probably won't happen because that's not even a goal of mine. <laughs> so one of the things I look, look, that out at, there. <laughs> look, I'm putting it out there. I look, yes. I gave up buying wigs for the rest of 2018. That's still something I'm emotionally dealing with. Lord. Okay. So one of the things that, one of the things that is important for us to know is the difference between financial freedom and financial independence because we do use those words interchangeably, and they're not. They're not. So, Queen Shannon, I know you um, kind of hit some definitions today in the group, and if you guys are part of Define You Movement, just to throw that out there, we are doing, we're going into our season of financial freedom, financial independence. I might need to change it, but We are dealing with our finances as a group. So if you are a woman, a queen, then feel free to join. If you're not, and if you are a male or can't join the group or whatever and just want some of the tips, just let one of us know um, via inbox or either, you know, on Define You Radio's Facebook or Instagram, 
and we'll drop some of the things we're doing in the group. So when you think of financial freedom versus financial independence, do you know what the difference is between them and um, or what do you think the difference is? Um, I can't say that I know the difference. I would guess that the difference is um, financial independence is not having to rely on someone else to be your source of finance. You're, you oh. independently, you know, develop your own and create your own methods of, of building finance. And freedom, um, freedom to me is simply having ha- a, like like a brush of a fresh air type thing. Like I, I don't worry about bills. I don't have to worry about the money. I don't have to worry about debt. Wait, let me say it right. I don't have to worry about debt. Um, I don't have to worry <laughs> about <laughs> I'm sorry. She you know I'm petty. I don't have to worry about anything when it really comes to money. So, I mean, those are just what I would think financial freedom and financial independence would be. You hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on on the head, um, and I literally looked them up today because, in in my mind, and I guess I really didn't think it through. But in in the top of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, they're the same, but they're not. They're mm-hmm. they're not like financially. I could be financially um, financially free means my house is paid up. I don't owe anybody. Anything. Hear that in my voice, because that's a goal. I know that's in the Bible. Look, let me go to the Bible. What does it say, Levon? Neither. Oh, no, man. Is that the Bible? Mm hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I actually studied that the other day. But I'm saying, I don't want to owe anybody anything, nor. Do I want to lend anybody anything? Mm-hmm. I want to be in a position to to give, which is my one of my mottos. Mm-hmm. If I can't, um, which my uncle, who is a Marine, who's since passed, but one of the things that he taught me was that if you can't afford, and everybody needs to learn this, instead of y'all ending up on Judge Judy or ready to fight or not speaking at holidays, if you can't afford to not, Get it back. Do not lend it. So I have a a straight-up no policy. Now, I will give it to you or I will give you a chance to earn it, but I'm not going to lend it. I'm not Mm. because I'm going to be at your door behind $20. So if – and that's my philosophy. Has it made some people in their feelings about me? Yes. But it, how you how are you in my feelings about my money that I work hard for? And we really have to get to that point. How many people do you know couldn't pay a bill because somebody owed them fifty dollars that they lent with a T? I'm saying that like that oh, for a wow. reason. Last week. Like how many people? Uh, like can you think you have people coming to your mind right now? Yep. It happens. Wow. It happens. And I learned, I'm telling you guys lessons that I learned the hard way many years ago because this has been my policy for a while, many, many years ago. And what's sad, you'll really see who people are when you tell them no. Yeah, that's true. When it comes to your money. Just thought I'd throw that out there. So, Queen Queen LaVon, if you would like to talk about um, the challenge we're doing in in the group, and do you think that's important? Oh, most definitely. um, I feel that it's important because, especially like you stated earlier, that in our culture, you know, black culture, which is what we can speak about because it's what I know, um, we don't talk about it. We don't have those conversations. And it's now 
when we are adults and we have kids and now we're realizing, you know what, I don't have to live this way. I shouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck. You know, I shouldn't be in a position where I can't, you know, give or to sow into somebody because I can't afford to because, and I can only speak from what I what I know and from my experience, when you look at other races, other nationalities, they teach that. They sow that into their kids. Mm-hmm. I, when I attended a workshop um, earlier in last month, you know, we had a financial advisor there, and that's one of the things she was stating, how you could see um, where families, their kids graduate high school and college with good credit. And she was telling us some of the techniques. And most of the time, our kids graduate high school and college with bills that's been in their name since they was five and six years old. You know, they're in debt when, in debt when they graduate. Mm. Somebody so being convicted is right a... now. <laughs> Not me, because I ain't never put no bills in my baby name. But, you know, a lot of people being convicted – right now and I don't mm. want anybody to feel um, you know judged or whatever else no. that it may be that that's what you had to do but but mm. how would that feel for your child to come back and say hey I can't you know do X, Y, and Z because apparently I had lights when I was five that never got paid mm-hmm. a light bill how mm-hmm. you know it's or whatever, uh, honestly, the first time I pulled my credit report, and I recommend everybody do that twice a year. You could go to, uh, I believe it's free, um, what is it, annualcreditreport.com. You're entitled to two free. It may be more than that, but I know at least make a habit of to do it twice a year. The first time I pulled my credit, I think I was 19. Apparently somebody had a whole car in my name when I was 16. Of Ooh. course, nobody fessed up. And it, it was paid off, but I'm like, I've never had a car. And they're telling me at the dealership, uh, well, we're showing, you know. Mm. So that's something we all should should be doing um, and taking advantage of those free resources. Mm-hmm. We need to be financially liter- li- literate. Literate. In 2019, Absolutely. and you could start. Absolutely. I can't even talk. You could you could start today. Start mm-hmm. showing showing your kids, because as I learned more about money and getting better with money and different things like that, I taught my son whether he could understand it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's very tight to this day. He has a very good credit score. Not to put your business out there. Uh, to this day, and he's 21, and he didn't understand things I forced him to do, such as save, Mm -hmm. put this amount up of your check, or put this extra change in your little bucket, or whatever else, you know, and, but it's teaching those things, and, you know, so that's what we have to do. Don't feel like you got to know the whole handbook about money and all of that to start teaching your kids. Start start little. And this is a great starting point. One of the things we did in a group, which was disgusting and embarrassing because we did have to post it. Most, you know, most of us did. We monitored our spending for two weeks, meaning everything we spent, whether it was the corner store Walmart, dollar store, and I'm saying things off my list, don't know, they're going to miss me at the dollar store because I spent a whole <laughs> lot of money just randomly running there. Um, gas, I didn't leave the house today because I, you know, because this is, these are the things, and to eating out. So uh-huh. that's the, one of the first things I suggest that the audience do. To This is where you start to get a handle on your finances. If you record your your transactions, what you're spending, whether it's cash or, uh, you know, on your debit card or whatever, D-I-B, I-T, um, <laughs> and then you really look at it and you add, add it up to how much of it was unnecessary money, 
Mm-hmm. You probably gonna feel like me. I know I was disgusted because I never, honestly, um, never paid attention to how much I was spending on quote unquote luxury items like my wigs or going to the nail shop or getting my mm-hmm. eyelashes done, eating out. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, those yeah. are some of the things that I noticed that that was just utterly ridiculous with my spending habits. So, Queens, what did y'all? How did you feel about really keeping track of your spending? Because we did it through from November fifteenth through November thirtieth. So I think we're kind of all still in shock right now. Um, Queen Lebon, what did you feel, or how did you feel? like actually keeping track and writing that down and knowing down to the penny what you're spending every day and then looking at that at the end of however many weeks. Total shock and amazement. For me to see, I mean, I hate to even say it, the (laughs) amount of money we spend on food, eating out, and this is in addition to going to the grocery store and having a refrigerator full of food that we could cook, that we purchased just to cook dinners, and we still would eat out. And I'm, it's just, yeah. it, it really is like, it's really ridiculous, really, the amount yeah. of money. And you think we could, it could be going towards savings, you know, building towards our future, towards retirement. It's just, it was really ridiculous. That and the, um, a lot of the subscription things because you get so caught up with that, you know, nowadays, mm. the subscription boxes, because even my daughter, you know, she has them. You, it, they're easy. You know, And you think it's just $10 a month, you know, and I'm getting this box with these free little items and half of the stuff you don't even use. And you That's got like three or four of those. So it was, it was very eye opening. Um, and a little sad. I mean, it really was a little sad to think we really waste this because it really is some of this really a waste. Now, did yeah. you go back afterwards and have like a, a family meeting or discuss the the changes or or what you discovered? Did you go back and have that discussion with your family? Oh yeah. One of the things we we gonna be eating out, so don't be look. You know that I'm cooking, and I did make you know make them aware that you know like for my son, if he gets home, let him know that look, there's gonna be dinner already there, so you don't need to stop by McDonald's, so you don't need to stop by you know somewhere and pick up something to eat. Letting them know so they know that there's food there because there that will be the wasted money because they're stopping and may not realize that there's dinner there, um, and that we really have to think about you know where we put in our money. We know. If we think we could put all this money aside and take a really great family vacation next year, mm-hmm. so it's little things like that. You know, putting it in a perspective, I would say that they could understand because we the money is something that we do talk to our kids about, and they understand the importance of you know building their credit and not doing things that's going to tarnish their credit, paying their bills on time, which is part of your financial freedom and independence is knowing that you have to pay those bills on time because a lot of times we lose money by paying interest fees and, you know, late fees and things like that. So we did have that conversation and, as, you know, have a look at what do we not need. You really don't need free huh. makeup subscription boxes, you know. <laughs> I know um, in which I I told my son because he's away, you know, at college, of course, I told him he needs to be mindful of his uh, spending because, you know, he's grown. I don't have a handle on his finances, but, you know, I could, the mama still could peep. I have access. <laughs> um, now, with my husband, because I sat and I added everything up and really looked at stuff this weekend, and I was like, and I told him, I just said, look, what we're not going to do is be spending all this money <laughs> and eating out. Like, I love, you know, I have a long day. I don't feel like cooking. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. easier to, to eat out. You think, okay, well, it's just two people. How much, you know, how much money it is. But on top of that, like you said, we're making groceries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, 
just random stuff. Like, do you have to stop at racetrack every day? Like, what are you getting? Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, to, this is my discussion with him. In the meantime, I'm at the dollar store sometimes twice a day. No lie. I, you know, I have a, this thing with boxes, okay? I like the decorated boxes. I don't know why. I'm not giving them away or putting gifts in them. I just like them. And because they had okay. the decorated boxes 25% off, I had to buy five of them. Oh, my bummer. What do you do with all those boxes? I just like them. But this is... Oh. But are I'm you just, putting anything dollar, in them? Not, I know. Are you hiding wigs in them? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but that's a good idea to get my wigs out of <laughs> the closet and put them in my boxes. Um, I just like them to put random things in them. Um, but, like, one day when I looked at my numbers one day and I saw I went to the dollar store twice, I was like, why did I go to the dollar store twice? And... I don't even know why I went. I just know I went to the dollar store twice, spent money twice, and I ended up with, I don't know, four or five boxes. Me just being honest. Queen Shannon, because we're going to get off of me and my habits. (laughs) (laughs) Queen Shannon, writing, writing down your you know, actually writing them down, what did that make you realize um, when you looked at what you did between November 15th and 30th? So for, here's what it did for me, because for some people they might say, oh, you cheated. I don't count it as cheating. Because what my mind told me was, are you prepared to really look at that? So to prevent from having to look at something that was going to, like, seriously probably slightly depress me, I was more conscious of what I was spending <laughs> because I didn't want to write it down and have to look at it and and scold myself for it. Mm. So what mm. I did notice, though, that um, LaVon hit it on it earlier was subscriptions. Some of those subscriptions, I'm like, Why? Do I even have this? I don't. I don't use this. Hulu. I don't mm-hmm. use Hulu. I, I, I can't tell you the last time. I don't even remember the login. <laughs> but they get my money every month. Mm. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out how I can get a refund because I haven't watched it. That's what I'm really trying to figure out. Um, I mean, you know, there's there's all of this that kind of thing, but I, I was very conscious of of what I would spend um, my money on. Now, there were a couple mornings that I know I went, and, and I told you I'm addicted to, like, health stuff. Um, so I got to go to Smoothie King because that, that was my thing. And Smoothie King um, is, like, 6 $7 easy on a small smoothie, a small plant-based vegan smoothie. So mm. I had to – now, that that was a struggle for me. I minimized it down to twice, you know, in the two-week period, so I was proud of myself for that. Um, but even stuff like that, it's like, is it really necessary? You can make your own smoothies. Like, you used to make your own smoothies. Why are you mm-hmm. spending these these five, six, seven dollars? Because it, it still depends on which one I get and if I add any enhancements. It can be an eight-dollar smoothie, easy. Those eight dollars, if I take that and Multiply that by five days a week. I've given those people forty dollars. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Those same forty dollars, I can buy my own products and blend it up and make my own smoothie with a little change left over. Because it's only me, a so lot I'm not going to buy like big bulk. Yeah. Yeah, I can that's take twenty dollars go to the public market. Uh, that's a hundred and sixty dollars <laughs> in a four week I need- period. I, I didn't need that. I didn't, I didn't need you to do that. I'm sorry. I got I, my calculator. I, I, I was originally going to do the math on how much I've spent on wigs, but I decided not to. Um, but that's $2,000 a year. <laughs> so, really? I mean, you really going to add on to that? <laughs> $2,080 a year. Listen, 
fine. That, but um, you didn't grow you know, your food. Because I grew your food. Listen, but I, that, that's why I said I was proud of myself. I broke it down to okay. just twice, so it's almost like once a week. Okay. And okay. I did that enhancement. I did that enhancement, and I went on Fridays when they're five dollars. Oh, so I only right. five dollars once a week. No enhancement. I I used to go to Smoothie King a lot, and I found that the five dollars didn't apply to the smoothies I liked by the time I finished. So I was like. Psh. Bump that, and it was like download the app. No, so um, I'm just saying, but that's it's a good thing. And what what I've learned, and I think we all need to get in the habit of that, because now I've made it a habit of at the end of the day recording what I spent. Um, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. But another tip, kings and queens that's listening, look at those subscriptions. And it hurt me to my core because I love my audio books. I love Audible. I've been a member since I don't know when. But I gave it up because, number one, it's, what, $14.99 or $19 something a month? Okay. And then you – and I have books that I've, you know, downloaded just because I had my Audible credit that I haven't even had a chance to listen to. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it, it hurt me. I don't want to say it hurt me because I, you know, I was like, that's fifteen dollars a month, and honestly, my mind went, that's like almost a new wig every three months, Valencia, because it made it make sense to me. So I canceled Audible, um, and I'm quick to send an email. A lot, it, it don't hurt. All they could do is tell you no. So look at those subscriptions that you have. Um, and a lot of times we don't think about them to the day or the day after they come out. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other th- things I canceled um, subscription-wise was Canva. And y'all know oh. I love doing doing my graphics. But guess what? I don't need the paid account. I could do what I need to do with the free account, honestly. Oh, yeah. And I'm honestly, yeah. I'm waiting on them right now uh, to to run me my money back because I got billed for it um, two days ago. I sent an email. They said, okay, no problem. We moved it back to a free account. Look for, and that's twelve ninety five. Mm-hmm. So that's something to think about, even, even in, mm-hmm. you know, in business or whatever you may use. Um, I cut my cable off, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, because guess what? I could watch everything on YouTube pretty much. Or if you have Amazon Prime, which, no, I haven't gave that up because there is value in that, what I save in shipping. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't know that if you have Amazon Prime, there's Prime Video that you yeah. get free. That's basically just like Netflix. You could watch a lot of mm-hmm. stuff on there because at one point in time I was paying for Amazon Prime and Netflix, and you know this Netflix started going up, and I was like, no, well, what am I going to do is this. Mm-hmm. But if you have Amazon Prime, then that you're already paying for, check out Prime Video. And and guess what? Prime Video, unlike Netflix, is will not log you out or whatever, saying that too many people are logged on. We haven't had that issue. Mm-hmm. So that's something to to note on that. That's something to to you know notate, keep you know. But I would say really look at your subscriptions because they add up. I don't know. I hadn't apparently Queen Levon hadn't bust out the calculator. Uh, to see how much I was spending on Audible in a year. But that's something to think about. Um, Mm -hmm. Another thing, another reason why, okay, so that's what our expenses. So that's the next step, budgeting. Okay. Y'all know budgeting is like a bad, it's like a B word. You know what I'm saying? You walk up on me and call me a budget. Might get hit. <laughs> but <laughs> calling that be heard, it might be a problem. Um, a lot of us don't know. <laughs> I'm just being honest. And anybody that has ever heard me talk about budget, I'm like, oh, that, that's like disgusting. I'd rather eat mushrooms. But honestly, 
the problem is that we make it more difficult than what it is, especially now there's so many easy ways to do it. There's, you know, easy ways mm-hmm. to do, easy ways to do it, uh, easier way to do it, especially if you're doing a little bit uh, every day, keeping up with your finances. So these are the steps, guys. Um, number one, look at how you're spending money. I suggest doing that for like a two-week period to see, or, you know, a 30-day period to see where your money is going and what you could cut out. Number two, look at those subscriptions um, and see which ones you could cancel. And don't be scared to send them an email asking them for your money back, tell them you canceled it. All they could do is say no, and I promise I have not had an issue with getting any money back, and I've been requesting refunds for a long time. Um, So with budgeting, (laughs) with budgeting, Queen Shannon, what are your, your thoughts about budgeting and how do you budget or have you started? Like, what's your thoughts about that? Um, I think I, I think budgeting can work if you work it. It's worth the budget. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I have started, and um, much like yourself, I had the Canva. Um, the Canva subscription, and and in my mind, I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even consistently using the system even enough, as much as I probably should to pay for this. So, like, things like that I've canceled. So I, I pull back on a lot of stuff like that, um, Netflix as well, um, Audible was one of the other ones as well. How, um, but in, in budgeting, I've... I, I've, what I've done is I've actually pulled everything that is a m- absolute need throughout the week. So I, I'm doing mine. I'm doing mine by week. I don't. I don't want to because to me, I think if I try to do for the whole month, I'm going to overwhelm myself. So if I take mm. it by week, then I, I I can I can work with it better. So by week, I know every week off the top there is the fifty dollar um, daycare fee for the morning. For my son to be dropped off to school, so that's an absolute must. Um, you know, I'll allot a certain amount for gas. I'll allot a certain amount um, for for groceries, um, and then it, during that week, you know, any different bills that I know are due that week, then I, I can work it that way. And so far this week, it's doing really, really well for me. Um, I will say I, I had to catch myself because. I wanted to order lunch at work today, and I was like, wait, that's not in the budget. <laughs> that's not in the budget. Let's let's take a step back. You you have this over here. Cause now, I will admit that there are times that that has been one of my things. Um, I'll bring my lunch, but I don't want that. I want whatever they're ordering. Um, <laughs> and, and it's like, no, I had to check myself, stop. And, and, I mean, here's the thing about budgeting I'm finding out. It takes discipline. Like, you have got yeah. to be disciplined. You have to discipline yourself. If not, I, I, the budget is going to fail. If you cannot stick to it and discipline, the budget will fail. So I had to stick to it and tell myself, no, you're not going to do that. No, you're not going to go to the store because what are you going to the store for? Oh, well, just because the baby says, well, Mommy, I, can we just go in the morning because I want to get some chips to take to school. I want to get this. Okay, occasionally mm-hmm. maybe, but we're not going to make this a habit. Better yet, here's what we're going to do. Sunday when we do grocery shopping, because we're going to do our meal yep. prep and grocery shopping all that Sunday, we're going to go get the big box of chips with with 32 or however many comes in it, and then you'll have chips that you can select from all week as mm-hmm. opposed to wanting to go to the store and want to buy stuff. So. I had to, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm working it, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm tweaking it, but for me right now, it's, it's working. Um, it's difficult. I can't lie and say that. Oh, it's so easy. It's not. It's, it's difficult because when you're not used to it, and you're used to just going and swiping and doing whatever and just keep it moving. You don't think about it, but when you have, to, when you're forced to think about it now and to actually put it, you know, put the the act, the work, the, the work behind what you say you want to do. You know, sometimes you'd be like, you know, I'm not going to lie. I have to ask myself, is this something I really want to do? And then mm. I say, yeah, because I want to be financially free. I want to be financially independent. This is These are steps that I have to make sure that 
financially, you know, I'm, I'm financially ready and that I'm putting myself in a better position than I am currently. So I think budgets, mm. are, like I said, budgets are good as long as you work the budget and you have to be consistent and stick to it and have that discipline. Yes. Great, great tips. I, I like that you do it for a week, like um, a week at a time. I like, I really like that idea. Um, Queen LaVon, your feelings mm-hmm. on the B word and have you implemented a budget? Or are you still working on one or where are you at as far as with a, a budget and your tips? I absolutely do believe in a budget. Um, I can't say that's something that I've always, um, even before I realized how important it was, had some type of budget, you know, even if it was just an Excel spreadsheet where I put up, you know, how much my income was coming in and what had to come out. So I knew, you know, to what I had to do with my money and what was set aside to put into savings and to sew in for the extras. Um and, but now being older, you know, and being married and having a family, we believe in a budget. We live by one um, because it it makes things easier. Like Shannon said, it is discipline. It does require discipline. It requires consistency. And But it's good because you can have something to look forward to because sometimes for us we will set aside and know we have something in mind, you know, like I talked about earlier, you, if you know we're going to put these monies aside and stick to our budget because we want to plan a great family vacation next year. If you know that's what you're going to do, it makes it a little easier to fight those temptations when they arise and you want to just go ahead and dip into that what you've set aside to be budgeted or for your um, savings to dip into it and just spend it on, you know, because I want to go out to eat or I want to um, – go buy a new pair of shoes or a wig, whatever it is. But if you have <laughs> an idea, because even in the budget, though, there are those things that I know I want my nails done. That's right. going to be in the – but it's going to be in the budget. But it comes down to deciding what do you want that you feel like you absolutely want and like to have and versus what you could do without. Because some things that we have in our budgets, we don't necessarily need. So I think mm. that's one of the key things that when you're setting up the budget is looking at what do you absolutely have to have. For me, I know my nails is something that absolutely have to have. My hair being done, absolutely have to have. Those are things that are, but they're in our budget. So, mm. you know, it's it's. It's simple, it's simple as that. I know it may sound, you know, I may make it sound simple, but it it can be difficult if you don't go in it with the right mindset. But the mindset has to be what we've been saying. I want to achieve financial freedom and financial independence. Hashtag and, you know, at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, budgeting does not mean, I saw my niece posted earlier because she's into trying to budget and do better because she's, seeking those same things, financial freedom and independence. And budget does not mean broke because some people think if you're on a budget, that means you're broke. It's absolutely right. the opposite. Love it. And and what budgeting mm-hmm. is, um, it's allotting a certain amount for certain things. So mm-hmm. one of the resources I found that, and I posted in a group that I thought was Nice, and this is actually what I implemented. It's um, called the 50-30-20 budget. And mm-hmm. what it is is 50, 50% of your income should go to your essentials. That means your home and the bills un- up under your home, you know, uh, your mm-hmm. car, insurance, those things. So 50% of your income should be allotted for that because you can't control that. 20%, and I thought this was interesting because all my life we've always heard say 10%, 10%, but this actually is 20% that goes to your savings. Um, so if you have, let's say, um, some some money that comes out of your paycheck for different savings accounts or investments, retirement, whatever else, 
then what you need to do separately on your own is see what's the the, the difference to get to that twenty percent. So don't think mm-hmm. excuse me, don't think I'm saying okay, well, you already got 10% or whatever coming out of your check, and then you got to add a 20 on that. No, make it equal 20 together. And the 30%, which is the fun part, that's your fun stuff. That's your nails, your your hair, uh, different things of that nature, 30%. And so when I applied this to our current income and everything, I saw, okay, well, you know, I, 30% is like a, a lot because I don't buy clothes regularly. However, there's times that I'm like, oh, I need this, 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 and this. So t- sometimes, no doubt, I'm over 30%, and I can honestly say that um, wow. I'm not saving 20% of our income mm-hmm. or have not been. Let me rephrase that statement, have not been. But now um, – Definitely writing my stuff down and looking to how much money I'm wasting, I know it, it's doable and achievable, and I know that it could be done because I know the, the bigger picture. And that brings me to, so I would say look at that. Um, y'all could Google, um, Google call us um, budgeting plans. <laughs> And it's based on your your income because it is doable. It, it it is doable. Take care of your your fifty for your your house, your car note, and those things. Because I've seen no lie, people um, spend kind of going back to those sew-ins we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You spent six hundred dollars on a sew-in, and I don't know how long they last because I do wigs. Okay. Um, but you're spending six hundred dollars on a sew-in, but your ninety-nine dollar insurance is canceled. Mm, mm, geez. All right, that's a mic you know? drop. Right. Yes, it is. And and I'm and I'm talking um, from like experience. I've learned some hard money lessons in in my twenties and early thirties. You know, definitely my twenties. Cause I'd have my nails done, hair done, everything did, and riding riding dirty mm-hmm. on on insurance, you know, mm-hmm. or car note behind. And I'm just being honest. That's why you know I hope my son and his friends are still listening, and I hope everybody gets it. Like this is not a a spanking. This is like life lessons. I've had to borrow. Uh, money to pay my light bill before, but I bet my nails was done and it cost more than Mm -hmm. what it would have for my light bill. So it's never too late. That's why you learn these lessons now. That's what, you know, Define You is about. That's what us three queens are about is teaching y'all, you know, what we've learned and that way from this day forward, you can't say you don't know. Amen. Now, hashtag a real talk moment. When we got mm-hmm. ready to to buy our house a couple of years ago, I did. I instead of me going to the nail shop every two weeks faithfully, I cut it down to once a month. Yes, my nails was looking raggedy, but I'm gonna tell you, if you get a French manicure, you really can't see that much when they grow out. I couldn't go every two weeks. We we're trying to save for stuff, so I went once mm-hmm. a month. And I don't think I'm not gonna lie and say I didn't buy wigs, but I definitely wasn't. I probably was doing one week every other month or something because I had a, a why. And that's important. Yes. That's the number one thing with dealing with money. Um, you're riding around with fresh nails and don't have the money to pay $25 life insurance. Mm-hmm. So yes. it's, it's those things. So, that we have to get better. Like, what's your why? Is it to take a vacation out of the country? Is it to buy a new car? Because every year you're spending your whole income tax, been there, done that, on buying a car that will last you approximately one year till it's time to get income tax again. Mm-hmm. So these are, are, are paying off, um, you know, certain credit things, and we'll have to definitely do a show about that. But paying off certain things and making sure 
so certain things are paid. So you can actually buy a car that has a warranty and will get you past A and B. So um, with the budgeting, I looked at gas. I'm like, so even though I try not to leave the house a whole lot, unless I'm making money. I looked at how much we spend on gas. I've allotted a certain amount for gas. Um, And if I don't need to just make random runs to the dollar store, so I save money two ways. I save money on gas, and I didn't go to the dollar store. Yes. So it's looking at that. Combine your run. (laughs) You know, if you have to uh, go grocery shopping, then while you already headed to work or headed home from work, I know you're tired. But do it then. you saving on gas versus you going all the way home, waiting a couple of days till you sitting at home, and then going back out to the grocery store. That's true. So that's enough because gas is not getting cheaper. That's the truth. Gas is not getting cheaper. Um, another suggestion I have, and this is kind of a, a way to, you know, make money, give you some breathing room a little bit. All those clothes you have in your closet that have dust, the shoes that have dust, the purses that have dust, either donate them because that way you're you're sowing seed into the ground and will come back, or sell them. Ain't no shame in having a garage uh-huh. sale. Mm-hmm. There's no shame sure in, in doing that. I'm, I'm, there's Facebook groups where people do that. I'm going to find, see who wants all these purses and shoes I don't wear because they extra cute and extra hurt my feet. <laughs> Instead of them sitting at the, I'm, you know, like real talk, that's an extra, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's some ways to, to, to bring money in as well to give you that jump start. Um, another tip I would like to add, see, I personally don't buy other people gifts. Very few. Let me rephrase the statement. Very, very few. But I'm not spending over a certain amount outside my household. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not obligated to buy anything for anybody. Christmas is about the Absolutely. spirit. Don't go broke in debt, rearrange your bills just so some random person um, or whatever you know, to buy a gift for some some random person. I have too many cousins with kids. They call me auntie. Guess what? Uh, Merry Christmas, T. Val. I love you. <laughs> I know that's right. Because it adds. I would up. just have to share. I have to share, and I have a question, Valencia. Don't let me forget. I have Queen um, that I have a question for you. But I do want to share what you said about the Christmas. I do strongly believe in that. And I can, I'm going to tell you something. This is our third year that we're going to be doing this, and it has worked amazingly. And I have come in under budget every year. And I kind of compete with myself to come in under budget. But I actually write out a list of who we're giving gifts to. And like you said, it's select. It's not just these random people that you say, oh, you my sister today and my BFF and all that stuff. It is strictly like immediate family. Close. I mean, you have to be really close friends and family. But the list may not have a to- may twenty people. I think when we counted, less than twenty people. But I even set a dollar amount as my budget of how much to spend on each gift. Like you said, I have a set uh-huh. dollar amount for each gift, and then I, I, you know, push myself because I now I love stuff and I know I. Spend, but I spend wisely for sales. I look for coupons, you know, codes. Like I love going to them because they always have a fifteen or twenty percent off, uh, extra ten. You know, I look for ways. You know, buy one get one half off or buy one get one free. Things like that where I'm getting my money's worth, and I kind of try to do it throughout the year. So at the end of the year, and I have come in under budget every year, but it has to stick. To you put it in paper and you put it in writing. So budgeting does work if you have a why. You understand your why, like you said, you understand your why. And but my question was for you. You talked about the fifty thirty twenty um, rule for budgeting, and I was just listening to um, as you was explaining out the budget, and I know you were saying that you've implemented this for your family. 
just thinking about it or when you were sitting down um, and researching it, did you feel like it was going to offer you some freedom where you didn't feel deprived? Because I think that's where some people fail with their budgets because they kind of like dieting. You feel deprived. Mm -hmm. I think um, that great question. I think, honestly, I didn't look up budgeting and really understand. I don't want to say understand the concept of budgeting, but I didn't have enough discipline or want to to budget because I'm like, why? Get it. Let's get it. You know, um, but I know as I, as I grow older and I have goals, and one of the things, you know, that I've shared with you guys, I want all all my friends to be financially independent and free. I want us to be independent and free together so I could call y'all so we could go take a girl's trip. And, you know, it's not a question of finances or time, you know, but mm-hmm. – I, so I knew I we have to make some changes, me and my husband, because I don't want my husband to work until he's 60, whatever the retirement age is these days. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. no desire to, to constantly put in work for the rest of my life, like the rest. Yeah, I plan on living to 127, <laughs> and I am all of 35. No, I'm 41. But... You know, so it's knowing that, and that's that's like actually a great segue into my next point. But I wanted to set, tell, give some resources on budgeting. There's uh, Mint. dot com. There's GoodBudget. dot com. Take advantage of whatever free, whatever. A lot of bank accounts have free budgeting tools. I myself have my stuff set in um, Excel versus having to go from my bank account into any type of budgeting software because people getting hacked mm-hmm. every day, whatever, mm-hmm. no. Um, so in this way with the Excel spreadsheet I set up, I'm physically going in there putting those amounts in, and it subtracts automatically from the amount I allotted for uh, whatever the expense is. Um so that's a, a thing that I like because it's something about when you have to physically do it, which people need to think. Why do you think you have debit cards? And they say America's credit is getting worse. America's money um, situation is getting worse because they've made it too easy to spend money. You're not physically, yeah. really physically doing it. You're just swiping away, swipe, 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 debit card protection, swipe, swipe, swipe. But when you physically have to go into your computer and type that disgusting figure in that you spent at Walmart or Dollar Walmart and got no meat, you know, uh, Dollar General, and just came home with boxes that's sitting up here pretty and empty, <laughs> makeup that you don't use, uh, or, oh, you know, what whatever is, is those things. So physically having to account for that money. Um, makes me more mindful of my spending and knowing, okay, Belinda, you got this much left to spend this month on whatever. Because I, I think last month in that two, that two, not two weeks, because it was a little over between November 15th and November 30th, I spent like 200 something dollars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with going to the nail shop and get my eyelashes done. Mm. Because when I go, I I get my pedicure too, and I tip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why they greet me when I come in there. Of course. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt in a month's time. I don't know how much their rent is on the building, but you know, I'm pay- I'm a regular customer. <laughs> they could write me down in a book, so not anymore. Mm-hmm. But those are those are some things that physically doing it that I like about the Excel spreadsheet and please believe I hate budgeting and I hate Excel. However, I love to travel. I love my husband. I know what physical work does to his body and I know um, I want to enjoy different things with him and my son. I want him to see that guess what? You don't have to pay a mortgage every month for the rest of your life or a car note every month for the rest of your life. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, that made it real to me, seeing seeing him come, you know, come home um, 
tired and, and dirty and just knowing what I have to put in, like, Valencia, come on now. You have to make it emotional. You have to feel, I don't want to say feel bad about it. You got to feel bad enough to want to feel good. And I want to feel good. Like, yay, I only spent, you know, I only went to the nail shop, whatever. I only spent $100 at the nail shop this month because I didn't get my pedicure. Or, I did, you know, what? like, it's those mm-hmm. little things. Um, and so that's what I like about that. So some another resource is Ebates. If Ebates.com, oh, yeah. if you do a lot of shopping online, if you go through Ebates website, and they have stores set up, they will give you cash back. I'm telling you not what I heard. I'm telling you what I know from doing it. And it may only be, let's say, $10 in two months or whatever. That's $10 more that you didn't have. Mm -hmm. So that's that's Um. something to to look into for my online shoppers. Um, Now, my next question or do you know your number? And I posted this in the group. How much will it take for you to be financially free, to be, um, to retire? Do you know if something, God forbid, something happens to you today? Do you know how much money you will get every month from Social Security? You can request that. You can request a statement from Social Security that will tell you how much you will get um, for, you know, retirement or whatever every month. You can, mm-hmm. re- re- I can't even talk right, Jesus. But, you know, you could mm-hmm. like, know that. Know your number. Know your, know, know that's one number you should know. And what it will take for you to retire. If you, if your goal is rather to re- work your whole life to you in your sixties, and I'm gonna tell you, the retirement age continuously goes up. <laughs> it is people aren't paying attention because I believe at one point in time it was sixty two, and then it was sixty five, and if I'm not uh-huh. mistaken, it's sixty seven. That's like a lot yep. of time. So we should know that number. Know what, um, you know, what your income is. What what it will be if you pay off X, Y, and Z. For me, you know, if we pay off the house and, and the cars, okay, that's a certain amount of extra income. Um, and there's different tools and, and calculators that some simple, some are difficult. you got to put in all kind of extra information um, to where you can figure that out. And I, I did the, the math on a couple of calculators, but I honestly know for me to – do what what my goal is to retire my husband and to live this life and to pay off X, Y, and Z. It's going to take between two, three to four million dollars. Hmm. Now, mind you, this is like because how you have to look at it is like okay, the rest of my life. Yes. So it's not just saying to, to ball out of control for for two years or anything like that. So when you think about bills that you will have the rest of your life, what lifestyle you want to live for the rest of your life, exactly. um, to cut that time, you know, one of the things that we're we're looking at, like definitely paying the house off earlier and then either using it as rental income, passive income, um, or downsizing with my son being not being at home and getting older. Um, we, I mean, do we need this house? Half the time I'm in one room. So knowing that that could be added to, to that. And so when I look at that and say, okay, I could get this for rent um, and I'll bring, have this income. So, for the rest of my life or whatever. So those are things we need to know. We all talk about retirement and everything else, but most of us don't even know what it will take financially for us to live comfortably. I don't want to be one of those people that retire um, one year and the next year I'm having to work part-time at Walmart because I didn't have enough to retire on. Right. And we don't think about that. I hated to see my grandmother retire and be tight. 
She yeah. lived a more full life when she was working. I, I've seen a lot of people that either retired early or worked up until that age, and by that time, in your 60s, yes, yeah, some some 60-year-olds are out there living their best life. Other ones are trying to figure out how they can make what they have to live on work. They got real quiet in this premium oh, you, show. You, you talking right? <laughs> you got you got me thinking over here about this retirement. You talking right? You know, because I always joke, a million dollars was like a lot to me. You know, um, like I was like, oh, all I need is a million dollars. A million dollars, I could do this. I could do that. But if you add up the cost of living that's steadily going up, because I'm sorry, you will not get a gallon of milk for under five dollars, probably. Yeah. Eggs used to be eighty nine cent. You paying almost two dollars for eggs. It's enough for me to just eat lettuce. But then that uh, had a recall the other day. Hashtag uh-huh. healthy choices. <laughs> so it's, well, the it's things too. like that. You. <laughs> it's things like that that we really need to think about. And I know it's easy to say, well, I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. You know, I'll worry about that next year or in two years or maybe when I hit 40 or 50 or something like that, Um, you know, but that worry about it later thing is is not going to work. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help your kids. So quick tip. Um, something my uncle did, my uncle that was a Marine, which, you know, I love and I've spoken about him before. Um, it was so many of us for Christmas. He gave us a $5, um, little gift, not gift card, cause they ain't have the gift cards, but the little, a little $5 gift certificate for McDonald's. That's what we got every year. Now, mind you, when I was little, it went a long way. Yeah, but you know, uh, I don't know how far five dollars will go now, but that's that's an idea as well. And he was very money conscious. I used to hate when he would tell me no because I just knew if I went to the club in my twenties and spent all kind of money, my uncle was gonna pay my light bill the next day. And he did for for a long time, mind you. I always paid him back. And then when he told me no, I almost had a heart attack. And I realized, wait a minute, now i like got to start being responsible for money. I got to go to the club and have a new outfit and nails done, new hair, because I was wearing a uh, weave back then, you know. So that's what really made me like, what? So um, I wanted to throw that out there. So I know are y'all thinking, do you know your number, Queen Shannon? I absolutely do not. Queen Levon. We have discussed that, um, what a number would need to be because, um, as you said, Queen Val, we want to live the lifestyle that we're living now. You know, we want to, what we've come accustomed to. So I don't care if I'm 65 or 70. I've already told my kids my hair is still going to look good and I still want my nails done. So we know, um, (laughs) <laughs> what it's going to take to get us there um, because, like you, I don't want to retire and be at the age I'm retired and I'm tired now and I can't enjoy life. I want to retire and enjoy life. I want us to take trips. You know, I want us to be able to volunteer, to be able to bless other people and to have fun, you know, and to sow into our grandkids' lives. We want to enjoy life, so we know right now we're going to have to put in the hard work. We're going to have to save, and we're going to have to budget, but it's doable. I I think that's the one thing I want everybody to definitely get from the show. Uh, I would say definitely definitely know your why. Definitely Mm -hmm. know your why and find little things you could implement. And I would I would say if you could think of, um, and then we we have time enough to to kind of touch on credit just a pinch, but if you could think of if somebody said okay y'all and said a whole lot what is the one thing that I could implement today Queen Shannon that will help me on the road to bettering my financial situation. 
Um, I would have to say financial literacy. You can you can do the budgeting, you can do whatever, but if you don't if you're if you're not financially educated, educated about money, it's not gonna help you. Um so one thing like I've committed myself to doing is reading at least two books per month on mm. educating myself financially, whether that's investment, understanding those a little bit better. Um, understanding credit better, understanding, um, you know, how to 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 make money work for me, all those things. Because again, I can budget all day, but if I still don't know what else is what else I I can do as far as let's just say for example investments. Okay, I can budget, which means I'm saving. But now I'm just saving. Should I just be saving in a regular savings account, or should I have it in a a uh, a mutual fund, or should I have it somewhere else? It, it, it's beneficial to learn and to know these things. So I would definitely say financial um, literacy is definitely key. Definitely you're going to need that. Mm. Love that. And part of what us three queens are doing, all of us have um, the Wealth Choice Success Secrets of Black Millionaires. All of us have started reading it. Um Dennis Kimbrough call us, um, <laughs> just putting it out there. If y'all know him, you know. Um, but some great, some great tips. One of the quotes, uh, what did it say, Queen Shannon? Because you posted it today in the group. Um, um, if you want to know, if you want to know how someone feels about themselves, check their bank account. Yes, ain't that disgusting? Mm. It, it's an amen, an mm-hmm. ouch, and like disgusting. <laughs> Y'all should see my face. Mm. One of the reasons why we, you know, I'm just uh-huh. saying. Um, this is mine. It's, it's, mm. <laughs> it's true. That's deep. I, I don't even. I don't even know how many people commented on that post because everybody was probably like, "Oh my God, I have low self esteem," according to my bank account. <laughs> or I'm going to die early You know um, Some people maybe You know it depends on how you Take things I know We didn't talk about money growing up I just knew You know we ain't have it And that's just What it is and every it seemed like Everybody around me was broke Because everybody You know self talk not just what you say, but the people around you, what are they saying? And I tell people all the time, don't ever say you broke, you know. But growing up, that's, I, girl, I'm broke. I just had to pay them people all my, what people? The people that give you rights? Like, them people? You know, um, it's that self-talk. If you're around people that's always saying they're broke, if you pay attention, they really are broke. And I believe that works hand in hand. And I will tell my son and anybody I talk to, like, don't say that. If somebody asks, you know, because we'll say that when somebody asks for bar- to borrow money. Girl, I ain't got it. I'm broke. And then next thing you know, mm-hmm. we are. So I have just started saying no. And what you, what you going to do next? Ask me why? Mm-hmm. You know, no is very much just like just, just say no, like Dare says. Just say no. Because if you say, no, I ain't got it, no, I'm broke, you you speaking into existence, mm-hmm. certain things. I'm a firm believer in that. Absolutely. So um, that's one one tip I have. Queen LaVon, what is the one, one thing you would like to say in regards to money and where a good starting point for um, the listeners? I think, and I think what I'm going to say um, echoes or goes right along with what um, Queen Shannon had to say about literacy. You have to know your numbers, know what you have, because a lot of us will live paycheck to paycheck, and our checks are deposited directly into the bank account. Um, I think Queen Valencia um, actually alluded to earlier, you know, we don't have we're not really dealing with money. We're not really having to see it and hold it and earn it. We have a um, debit card 
So your money is being direct deposited into an account that you just automatically assume is there. You may do a quick check to make sure it's there, but then you just go swipe, 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 and spend. Mm -hmm. We don't know, really know exactly down to the dime. Can you say you know exactly how much you have? Only usually when it's empty that we know that amount. But know what you have, know what's coming in, know what's going out, and know your numbers. Know what your credit score is. I know free um, Credit Karma is another free website that you can go to and monitor your credit. It gives you um, two, I think, two of the credit reporting agencies. But know your numbers. You have knowledge is power. That sums Mm -hmm. it up. Knowledge is power. Hashtag amen. Um, And like I said, you could also, a lot of, uh, if you have credit cards or your bank account, so, you know, a lot of times they'll give you, um, different budgeting tools, different, you know, know your credit score tools and different things like that that you have access to. Um, check it tonight. Don't don't be scared. Know, know where mm-hmm. you are and know that if I could go from not being able to uh, finance a blade of grass in my 20s to, <laughs> to owning cars, to owning a house, it's it's possible, but you have to learn and and apply what what you learn. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess we'll maybe we'll try to touch on uh, credit before the year is out, hopefully, because there's a lot of things people don't know about credit that I've learned over the years, not just as far as with building your credit, um, but you know, dealing with your credit, bettering your credit. And, and those things Because if I could buy a house And mind you, nobody around me owned a house I thought it was for rich people And people that, you know I just thought it was an impossible Thing to achieve So it kind of goes back To that self-talk and that mindset as well um, And I could tell you it's not It's not um, Impossible to achieve it's, it's easier than people think but it starts with definitely knowing your number. So I guess we'll just touch on credit um, in another show. Hopefully before the before the year is out, we'll have a chance to touch on credit a little bit. But I wanted to say um, to start start now and start start small. Google is your friend. Google is my best friend. Call us, Google. Um, <laughs> to they find out anything us. you you know, hey, you you never know. You know, we have a hot international audience. They might be sitting in the uh, office in a meeting with um, you know, the Google people. Tell them, you know, they say call them. I'm just saying. Uh, but <laughs> Google is a is a, a really good resource. I love what Queen Shannon and Queen Levon said because. We're all reading the wealth choice and, and getting our knowledge and our take on that. Um, one thing, another financial book I'm listening to is about um, generating passive income, you know. So that's my two financial books that I'm, one I'm listening to when I'm reading because I was going to get all my money out of Audible. I don't care. Um but those things, pick up a, a pamphlet, walk in your bank and say, hey, look, I need some help, whether it's your bank or somebody else's bank. You'll be surprised mm-hmm. what, you know, what people are willing to do to to help you, to assist you. All they could do oh, is say, no, we ain't got time for that. Uh-huh. Exactly. I was going to, exactly what you're saying. I was going to say, um, tell you that is exactly right. Go check with your bank. A lot of banks now are offering financial literacy workshops. I mean, and these are like Uh free to the customers and free to the public. So please utilize that. Like you said, Google is a great resource, but there's a lot Uh of free resources available to you. You just have to do the research and you have to put forth the effort. They're not going to come to you. You're going to have to get up and do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hashtag mm-hmm. Amen. amen. And uh, one of the things we said a couple of shows ago, um, 
always we always say that, you know, watch about, you know, who you're with. You know, people to leave behind. Those friends that's broken have no clue, no desire to not be broke. You know, you may want to maybe not leave them behind, but distance yourself severely unless that's your lifetime goal. Um, you know, get friends that you could talk 401k um, and things like that versus MK. Michael Kors don't pay me. Now, he could call mm-hmm. us or his company could call us, but, you know, you have to think about that. You wearing other people's stuff, you could put your name on a purse you get for wholesale, sell it, and wear your own stuff, market your own stuff, make that yeah. side hustle money work for you, make that passive income um, work for you. You never know. Y'all better look at the story of FUBU. Mm-hmm. Or any any other a lot more more millionaires and billionaires are self made. You don't need an office. Uh, the owner of Amazon, whose picture is up on my wall, Jeff Bezos, yes. started in his garage. Yes, um, he did. So that's that's my two cents to to add. It's been a, a great show, and I hope um, thank y'all for sharing and and being so honest. And I know. Like, it's it's not fun talking about money because it's one of those discussions you kind of feel like, Ooh, should I be talking about this publicly? But you have to. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. talk about everything absolutely. else publicly. Exactly. I know. I know. I think we're different because we're actually, and I think we're different in the way that we're not, we're not scared to talk about our own experiences to help people grow and it's it's still learning because guess what True. i need i need to figure out uh passive income i need to figure those things out um you know and i'm sorry i see we have a question but we only have like literally a minute or two left in the show feel free to um inbox us or you know put your question on define you radio's facebook or ig page so with that being said, it's been a very humbling show, Queen. We got work to do. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, that's all, folks. Make sure you are connected with the show. And, of course, us queens of Define You. You can find all of us on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere, but the show is on Instagram and Facebook. Make sure you like our page, share it. Let us know what financial questions or habits you need to break. What do you need to learn? Um, We could find out and present it to you. We're always very engaging on the show's page. So with that being said, pens and papers down. Class is officially over. Until next time, remember your past doesn't define you. It gives you definition. And it's up what you do with that. It's completely up to you. Y'all have a great night. Yay. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to Define You Radio. Make sure you... Pros in the know start with Lowe's because Lowe's makes it easy to save big on building materials to finish any job. Need to stock up on water heaters? Save 5% on select A.O. Smith water heaters when you buy three or more of the same model. Plus, save 5% on eligible purchases every day when you use your Lowe's business credit account. So, pro, now that you know, start with Lowe's. While supplies last, credit offer subject to credit approval can't be combined with other credit offers. Exclusions apply, U.S. only.